On the 10th day of Christmas, for the love of the mouse gave to me red velvet chocolate chip cookies. Welcome back to another video. This is our 10th day of our 12 days of holiday baking and we are so excited that you are here with us today. If you're new around here, make sure that you click that subscribe button, click that like button if you like what we're doing and you like holiday baking, and click that bell notification so that you can be notified every time we release a video. We are doing this 12 days of holiday baking because I love holiday baking, and I thought it would be really fun this holiday season to share that love of baking with you. I know this has been a difficult year for so many of us, but who doesn't get into the holiday spirit with a little bit of baking? And these red velvet chocolate chip cookies are just the ticket. They're a really simple recipe. They do take a little bit of time because we have to completely chill the dough, but it is so worth it, and I think you're going to love these cookies. Along with these vlogs, we are also doing a step-by-step blog corresponding with each of these days of baking. So be sure to head over to our blog for theloveofthemouse.com so that you can follow up with all of these delicious recipes and try them out yourself. Now if you want to, you could always bake along with us. We'd love to have you join us. It'd be like you're in our kitchen or we're in yours. We can bake up some delicious treats together. We're going to jump right into today's video because these babies can't wait a moment longer. We have in our mixer over here a half a cup of softened butter. You always want to bake with room temperature ingredients unless the recipe specifically calls for chilled ingredients. It's going to help your dough to be softer and it's going to help with that toughness that we don't want to get in our cookies. So we have a stick of butter softened, unsalted, I always bake with unsalted butter, and then we also have three quarters of a cup of tightly packed brown sugar. I prefer dark brown sugar, but if you like light brown sugar, go ahead and add that, and a half a cup of sugar. We're going to cream this until it's light and fluffy, and in this over here we have our trusty sifter. If you're new around here you might not know that I love sifting ingredients it is absolutely a key ingredient to successful baking we've kind of gotten away from sifting in the baking sphere it just really is an extra step that helps your cookies stay light and fluffy and airy and it's a hundred percent worth it to take that couple extra minutes just to sift your dry ingredients we have a cup and a half of all-purpose flour a quarter cup plus two tablespoons of unsweetened cocoa powder. We have a teaspoon of baking soda and a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. So we're going to sift together our ingredients and then we're also going to cream our butter and sugars. dry ingredients sifted together and we also have our butter and sugars creamed together. You want those to cream really good and be nice and fluffy in there. We're next going to move on to adding one egg. I like to live on the wild side and crack my eggs directly into my mixer but if you're not comfortable with that just break them into a separate bowl and then add them in. We're also going to add about a tablespoon of vanilla. We're going to mix that really quick and then we're going to add a tablespoon of milk. Now I use oat milk because that's what we have on hand, but you can use any kind of milk, um, including a buttermilk or whatever kind of milk you have on hand. We're gonna mix that up real quick, and then we're going to take our spatula and scrape down the sides of the bowl, and then we're going to take our dry ingredients and add them in about a third at a time. Mix until just incorporated. The reason we're doing this in batches is because we don't want to add all of our dry ingredients and have them explode everywhere. Now if your dough is looking particularly dry, mine is looking a little dry, I'm going to take another tablespoon of milk. Actually I'm going to add two tablespoons and you can add that right in there. We have our dough just incorporated. Now the key to red velvet is of course red food coloring. Be careful with this, it will stay in your clothes your hands, everything in your kitchen. I have these handy little spoons here and I'm just going to spoon out some of our coloring. This is a gel, which does pack a lot of extra pigment, but the one thing I will say about gels is that they dry up much quicker than a typical food coloring, so you will have to deal with that. And I'm going to get my fingers in there and dye my fingers permanently red. Now we're going to mix this until we get the right color. So we have our cookie dough in here that is the perfect color. And then we're going to add a cup of chocolate chips. I like to use semi-sweet chocolate chips because this 
dough is pretty sweet. We're just going to mix that until incorporated. And then the last thing we need to do is we need to refrigerate our dough for two hours. But it's only going to seem like a second to you. We have our chilled cookie dough and we're going to take our Silpat mats. They are on our cookie sheets and we have sprayed them with baking spray. Technically with Silpat mats, you don't have to spray them. I do because I don't want my cookies to stick, but you don't have to. And I'm going to take my cookie scoop and I'm going to scoop out balls of dough onto our Silpat mats. I have preheated the oven to 350 degrees. And then after that, we're going to cook them for about eight to 10 minutes until they're just starting to brown on the bottom. red velvet chocolate chip cookies out of the oven and they are soft and chewy and delicious and red which is perfect for the holidays these cookies are amazing they have a great rich deep flavor so good the brown sugar really adds and I know that these will be a crowd pleaser whether it's just for your family at home or for co-workers whatever you want to do these cookies are perfect and say the perfect amount of Merry Christmas well, that's going to do it for day 10 of 12 days of holiday baking. I hope that you love this recipe as much as I loved making it with you. Be sure to check out the corresponding blog post over on fortheloveofthemouse.com so that you can get step-by-step -step instructions on how to make these perfect festive chocolate chip cookies. I want to hear in the comments what some of your favorite holiday traditions are. We will be back with two more days of holiday baking, so be sure to stay tuned for that and be sure to click that bell notification if you haven't done so already so that you get notified when we release those videos. Thank you guys so much for being here today. It is such a happy holidays having you join us in the kitchen. We hope that you have a very Merry Christmas and a happy holidays. From our family to yours, happy holidays, everyone. Thank you so much for stopping by. And for the love of the mouse, never forget that it all started with a mouse.